Uh, what is it? Group A, B, C, D, or one, two, three, four, five, six? One, two, three, four. A, B, C, D, okay. So why, why don't we start with the report from Group A? Uh, would someone like to speak for Group A? Yeah, we don't really have a name for our group, so it doesn't matter. But uh, we talked about a lot of things. Uh, we talked about history of China. And uh, one uh, member brought up this whole idea of where did communism go, where did history go, and how history and communism sort of insinuates itself into design, and how a certain possibility of uh, disrupting that or opening that up may be made possible. Uh, I don't know how that would be possible, but we just sort of threw it out there. Uh, we also wanted to make a distinction between what good feeling meant. Uh, was it about, was it emotional or is it affect? Uh, is there a bad good feeling or is it just good feeling in general? Uh, we were also concerned about this whole idea of uh, freedom. We didn't really know which freedom we're talking about. Uh, so many different categories of freedom, so many different categories of happiness. Uh, I thought it might be kind of productive to sort of make that distinction between which specific type of freedom we're talking about when it comes to art making process. Uh, we talked about Deleuze and Gautari and schizophrenia. <laughs> uh, what else do you talk about? See, I, wasn't, I wasn't part of it. So I don't know what, the, what, the, what that was about. Uh, we also talked about commercialism and how the distinction between commercialism and avant-gardism is no longer a viable paradigm to talk about architecture. Um, if we're talking about design as something that is not planned or structured from above, but something that is emergent, as we've been trying to talk about, then how do we possibly talk about the role of specific artist? And if we don't talk about the role of specific artist, is it possible for us to even talk about uh, radical politics that is envisioned by specific expression that a certain agent is supposed to have. Uh, those are some of the questions we had, some of the comments. Mm, so. Thank you. Um, any uh, supplementary comments from other members of Group A? I think that's it. That's it. Okay. Uh, group B? Hello? Hello? Is this on? Okay. Um, well, we... I guess to kind of take our um, cue or to take my cue from what Achang said, I will just kind of focus on one element, the, the performative that he um, mentioned in his talk. And I was kind of interested in how um, from the very beginning of our discussion in our group, we started talking about Achang's talk by discussing an artist that I don't know very much about. My, Lu Xiaodong, um, our other group members can talk about him, but we kind of began our discussion of Achang through another person, which I thought was very representative of some of the comments Achang has been saying over the past week about the vehicularness of the dragon as an image and as the function of storytelling, what storytelling is able to do not to make intelligible or legible um, something that stories or images are purporting to represent, but something else. So I was kind of fascinated in how A Chang's ability to tell stories takes us somewhere else than what it is purporting to tell us. I think one thing that recur came up a little bit last week too was just this uh, this very straightforward style of uh, of making art that you might say is common to people working in different media um, who come out of the cultural revolution essentially and made their careers in the 80s to begin with um, and kind of the idea of um, whether sort of amplified shared experience allows for the possibility later on of um, more simplified narration that does other kinds of work without really having to 
do it outright. Uh, and then um, what we just also talked a bit. I, we were just kind of jumping from yeah from film to painting to literature and kind of I don't know trying to come up with tossing around ideas about uh, essentially about. Uh, the legacy of, of the socialist realist tradition and how it's been kind of adjusted and um, modified for a newer moment. And I think the final thing that we tried to do was to uh, take this back to questions of the question of design. I don't think we really had a kind of a kind of conclusion, but um, I think uh, we brought up this this Latour essay and, and how that may link back to this idea of uh, matter of matters of fact and matters of concern. So I think I think that's that's about it. Um, Bruno Latour, that's one of the readings. Okay. <coughs> uh, and Taoism. Okay. All right. So uh, Group C. I'm not, I'm not sure this uh, reflects the group discussion, which was rather wide-ranging, but I'll take the opportunity to ask a question uh, to Aching. And it's about the, the good feeling that you mentioned. A as an artist myself, I, I, I think I understand but, uh, the idea of good feeling, but I'd like to hear you elaborate on it, especially in terms of um, does the good feeling include empathy, empathy outside the self, uh, does it, uh, can you distinguish the good feeling from self-expression within creativity? Um, I don't know if Simon wants to add yes. anything for Any? Okay. Some of what we talked about, other people have, other groups have already talked about. Um, but we discussed Achang's style of presentation and how this can be compared to um, a seminar, a theory seminar. And we talked a bit about um, the designing of the seminar and the, the structure of the seminar and what's possible, etc. cetera. Um, I was interested in um, going back to a discussion that I had with Sarah the very first day in which um, I proposed to her that that one way of thinking the human non-human um, divide that's kind of um, proposed in the Bruno Latour essays um, especially in relationship to the thing um, is to talk about race um, and how racialization can be one way of identifying thinking, um, hierarchy, and difference. And then we talked about dog shows and how dog shows are genetic trade shows and how in many ways the design of dogs um, can lead us to very interesting directions. Dog shows. Dog shows. I will speak Chinese. Okay. Uh, so. 我们这组讨论呢大概主要是两个问题讨论然后最后大家觉得说可能就是你可以就是把它理解成是这种异化不是一个将死的状态而是一个就是动态的一个状态就是说在这种可能在双重人格当中保持一个平衡就是在写作的人格和自我的人格之间保持一个平衡就
呃，但是就是在当每一个人就是进入这个社会的时候，可能就是异化都是不可避免的，所以就是呃，最好就是可能把这个异化理解成是说，呃，在自我跟他人的这种关注之间保持一个动态的平衡，而不是说去抵制一种来自他人的关注或者说是干扰。呃，这嗯，只是一个 comment。呃，然后第二第二个呃一点是说，呃，阿成提到。这个呃，创作，创作是就是你要去 feel the feeling， 就是要感觉这个感觉，而不是去把这种感觉理论化。呃，但是就是在这个，就是在在你当你就是进行这种分类的时候，其实你就已经在定义了一种关于创作的一个概念，就是说，呃，要是一种感觉化的这个感觉，而这种概念，这种分类本身，当你一开始这样分类的时候。就已经是就是陷入到那种去理论化这个感觉当中了，因为因为就是可能当我们想到那种古代的作品，呃，比如说什么呃，就比如说庄子的时候，你很难去定义他说这是一个哲学理论化的东西，或者说这是一个文学，就嗯、呃，但是就是后来我们组又立刻有人提到说，那那你这种讨论，那我们就是在扮演一个会师的角色，就是去。对庄子进行那种诡辩，所以最后最后我们大家觉得说，对于阿成先生今天上午的讲话，我们最好是保持沉默，对，就是不要避免我们去成为一个会师，去对庄子的那种呃欣赏鱼之乐的那种美好的状态进行一个干涉。对，那错。你你要自己再再用英文讲还是我我讲？我要是讲可能不准确，你你来你来纠正吧，好吗？ Uh, okay, um, we basically talked about um, two issues. Um, I'll make it simple. Uh, first of all, we think what Achung said this morning was in a bit of a contradiction because he at one point talked about we should resist the alienation of the artist and uh, he also, then he said alienation is unavoidable. So, you know, it's like taking on double personality. So our conclusion or our feeling is that um, Alienation is not a fixed state of being, but rather a uh, constantly moving, um, developing state of being. And uh, what we're doing is to find the balance of these two uh, personalities. Um, then the second thing we talked about was, um, you know, um, this morning we discussed the uh, feel the feeling. Uh, Rather than to theoretize the the, uh, the the process, but uh, we feel that once you start defining what you're trying to do, which is feeling the feeling, you're already uh, making it into theory and making it trying to fit what you're doing into a category, like. Um, you know, when Zhuangzi was taught, you know, in the story, Zhuangzi wasn't. They, they were not, they didn't realize they were uh, discussing theory or philosophy or anything like that. So I think at, um, we, we're kind of um, play um, the role of Hui Shi in the story and it's better that we just remain silent and uh, just feel the feeling. Is that what you... 然后我想补，我们组讨论的另外一个问题是关于阿成先生讲的另外一个方面，就是集体创作的问题。我们在讨论就是是否有必要去区分集体创作的两种传统。我们可以看到，集体创作在历史上，它有一种形式，就像阿成先生讲的那样，就是。多少人，然后他们汇集自己所有的力量，然后为了一个宏大的目标去完成一件宏大的艺术品，比如像龙门石窟、云冈石窟，然后还有兵马俑。然后当每个人把他们的力量汇集到、投入到其中的一个小的部分的时候，这个整个的作品会获得一种极大的。感染力，然后这种东西在现代中国文学中的复兴，或许我们可以认为是样板戏，就是也许样板戏是很意识形态化的一个东西，它很多地方还是粗糙的，但是它确实有一种很宏大的这样一种感染力。但是我们也很感兴趣这个集体创作传统的另外一个方面，就是可能是从画本这个传统开始的，然后。画本这个东西它是什么？它没有一个定型，然后每个说书人在传唱的过程中给它加上自己的部分，它就这样是一直不断
在生长。然后这个东西在中国现代文学中的复兴，我觉得很像文革的手抄本小说。文革的手抄本小说并不是一次创作完成，他第一个人可能就提供一个框架，然后每个人在抄的时候加上他自己感兴趣的东西，然后他就成了一个不断生长的这样一个生命体。然后。再延续到当代，可能就是我们现在上网，我们每发一个帖子，然后别人跟，然后再怎么样，然后这都是一个创作，然后我们不能够把它定下来。因为它是你一旦把它定下来，这个东西就死了。它就是在这种不断扩张的过程中，水无定型的这样一个过程中，获得了它一种极大的生命力。这种感染力并不是来源于一个宏大的目标、一个宏伟的叙事，而是来源于一种。呃，自由自在的、无拘无束的生命力。每个人的创作没有目标，它仅仅是为了其中的一种乐趣，可能是更接近于一种创作本源的创作，就是仅仅为了乐趣，而不是为了说明的创作。Um, we uh, also had um, I want to, I have something to add, uh, which is we talked about the uh, collaborative process of. Creation. So I'm wondering if Acheng has was making any distinction between two kinds of creations. One is to pull all the people together and their forces together towards one common goal and create a grand art, which is very powerful, like you know the, some of the, uh, the um, some ancient Chinese art. And I, we think the modern Chinese example is um, the the Yang Ban Xi, the the Cultural Revolution theme, the Peking Operas, which is may seem very rough and crude, but it also it still it has a lot of power, in, raw power in there. And uh, we think the second kind of collaborative creation is different. It's um, it's like some uh, like in the past we had those um, novels. We before any. Modern um, technology of printing, we just co copied um, the novels from one person to another, and uh, there's no fixed framework. Everybody was contributing a little bit into that, and uh, it's more like a work in progress. And also, uh, we're thinking about the example of the internet um, process. Um, because there's something uh, that goes on the internet, everybody contributes. To that, it, it's like uh, and and build on it. It's like water; it has no shape. But in the flowing, we see the the po the power and the vitality. This kind of collaboration has no goal. Rather, it's everybody takes the uh, some uh, enjoyment out out of this process, and uh, that that's the the whole idea of this process. Okay, uh, group uh, E. Group E, yeah, group E. Go ahead. Yeah, mm. uh, we also had um, a similar discussion about um, creation, um, online creativity, uh, and we also uh, made some references to the world of hackers um, as uh, the peculiar way of creativity uh, in the 90s. Um, in a digital domain where uh, there's a kind of sedimentation where the process has uh, um, uh, is far more important than the result. I mean, uh, the process has a sedimentation of codes, of releases in time and space. Um, so this is one question, that, uh, one question that we addressed in Group E. Um, other? Okay, and anything else from Group E? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, group uh, Group F. Um, we um, I guess our, our discussion was divided in two parts. The first part um, we talked about the role the role of theory and um, sort of the the. The, the difficulty that we found that um, that there's a, there's a question about not utilizing um, or not using uh, Western theory to uh, to try to understand China. Um, 
and then the other one of not using theory at all. Um, and so we're, we, we're sort of feel trapped in the uh, difficulty of not fully knowing um, any, uh, any other theory that is not Western to be able to then engage the subject matter in a way that is not uh, from the outside perspective. Um, and I think that, uh, uh, and, and here I'm not um, meaning to speak for everyone else in my group, but at least for me, it, it creates this tension of um, how much, how much, um, how much can I uh, understand or criticize or, or uh, theorize uh, without, you know, cre creating a, a subject, um, which is not, not the intention ever. Uh, and then the, I, I guess the second part uh, of the conversation revolve uh, around the issue of um, the, the water and the and, and dragon and um, just that. Uh, what we understood, dragon, uh, the dragon is um, is a representation of masculinity, and um, and but it seems to be that uh, the the dragon is is most times born out of uh, out of uh, water, which seems to signify uh, the f female part, and so it's just sort of that relation of um, the water and the dragon, and if water uh, is also uh, it becomes a tool or a, a subject just as much as the dragon. Okay, if not, we might ask uh, Achang whether he wants to respond to some of these points. Let's uh, respond to all of them. Uh, it seemed to me that the num a large number of things, but one of, uh, we can maybe just start one by one and see whether this interests uh, Achang. Uh, one is this whole distinction between, uh, uh, I mean, this question of uh, good feeling. Right? And I think a number of groups wanted him to say a bit uh, more about that. And uh, it seemed to me that um, uh, we might be able to start by making this, a distinction between good feeling and feeling good. Right? Uh, feeling good is not necessarily a good feeling. So, I mean, that's how I would do it. Uh, but, uh, <音>呃大概一千五百年前呢已经已经认识到语言和那个表达这是个困境也许大家 都知道中国的那个禅宗，禅宗其实主要就是想怎么克服这个语言传达当中的这个这个矛盾和困境。嗯, as early as uh, 1500 years ago, the Chinese realized the language and the expression is. Um, really gives us a, a lot of constraints and uh, contradictions. And the Zen theory is um, utilized trying to deal with this constraint. Uh, so Chan uh, there's a principle in the, the, the Zen theory is as soon as you open your mouth, you're wrong. So uh, if we accept it, then it's not what I mean. It's 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 what I mean. So if we admit that uh, the moment we mo uh, open our mouth, we get alienated from what we meant, then as one of the, uh, the, com the, the presenters said, then we, the only choice remaining is to remain silent. So, uh, 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 
，因为那样我们就没有没有办法说话了，呃，但是人还是要说话的，还是要表达和和和沟通，那么就产生了其他的方法，也就是说，禅宗的比如说棒喝，棒喝就拿这个棒子，你你来问的时候拿棒子打。Um, but after all, we still need to speak. We need to talk to express ourselves. We need to com communicate. And then Zen um, came up with something like, uh, whenever you talk, we kind of hit hit your head with a stick. Uh, why do you hit and not tell him you are wrong? 禅师判断对方的状态，你要跟他说的时候，他越说越乱，因此要不如打他。打他的意思是什么？去退回到你的那个初始点，你再再一步一步想这个事情。所以要直接的就把他打回原点，所谓打回原形。Why why hitting with a stick instead of saying, "Hey, you're wrong. This is not right." Uh, the idea is to hit you back to the beginning, the, the original state, and uh, try to make you think it through from the beginning. And Uh, so, um, although that Zen is uh, serious against uh, the language and uh, it fully realizes the, the constraints of the language, uh, however, over the years, it, Zen theory has accumulated over um, three. Thirty thousand to fifty thousand of this, what those um, anecdotal uh, stories, which we call the Gong An. This, this is very confusing. He opposes language, but he records so many stories of language. He actually clearly shows that Zen thinks that the state is individual. He cannot use one answer to solve. 解决那么多的状态，因此就形成了我看你的状态是什么，我采取就是这个空间的方法。这个案例绝不可不可能用在另外一个人身上，为什么？因为两个人的状态不一样，所以。OK。OK。So we. See a very obvious contradiction here. One, on one hand, it's against the, the language, and on the other hand, it has accumulated all these Gungan stories. Uh, what Zen theory is trying to say is there's not a fixed explanation for everything because my response would depend on your state of being and depends on that specific time and space. This uh, 嗯，禅宗反而向我们展现了一个一个一个生动的呃图景，就是每个人都有自己的具体状态，他不可能用一句话去解决，或者说一个理论去解决所解决所有的这个状态，所以他必须针对个案，所以这个个案呢就积累了几万个。几万个这个个呃个案，他恰恰从这个数量这么多，来反过来说明语言的局限性，因为语言总是有它的有它的抽象性，有它的等等这些，所以，所以我我要说的，我我要我要介绍的这个这个情况是什么呢？就是我们我们活着当然要说话。那这个时候，我们就要去找到怎么说话的方式。那么，我觉得，如果我们的脑子多动一动的话
，有一个方法就叫否定法，就是我建立起一个东西的时候，我去我接着再说的时候是否定前一个。你否定前一个的时候，等于你又建立一个，完了你再去否定，这样的连续否定的这个过程，我们会明白其中的意思。Um, this um, this contradiction shows very a vi very vivid um, vision that um, there are all uh, many uh, different and spe specific scenarios out there, and there's not one single theory that would explain or resolve all issues. And that's why we have tens of thousands of cases, and the number of these cases and the massive uses. Of language, um, rather demonstrates the limitation of language, which is very abstract. So uh, we do need to speak, but the question is how. So when we're talking about the issue, we can just use our brains and use a practice called the continuous negativity. And when we are discussing things, we can. Talk about what is not, and then in this continued process, we can approach uh, the truth. So, uh, 有意思的是，禅宗教给我们一个连续的东西，一个连续表达。他不断的在否定。当然，另外一种。也，我们也可以这个什么，我们也可以呃做，但是效果不太好，就是连续肯定，连续肯定这个方法，后来被证证明常常是不成功，反而是连续否定的一个呃这个表达方式呢，是是是能够比较容易传达传达出你你要说的那个东西，嗯、你要说那个东西，所以。我也在努力学会、学会、呃，学习这个听别人的否定式、否定式的表达。Uh, so Zen theory taught us something very interesting, which is the continuous process of、um, denying, uh, of、um, negativity, saying what it is not, because in sometimes、uh, in the common、uh, practice we. Sometimes we hear a, a chain of continuous、um, affirmative statement, um, and uh, this practice,、uh, in a lot of times, does not work very well. And I'm still in the learning process of、um, learning how to listen and through this、um, other people's negative statements. 啊，这是我今天的啊，我今天从一开始讲这些东西，有建立否定、建立否定这样一个方式，可能对不熟悉这个方式的呃人呢，可能造成很大困惑。呃，那我先说到这儿了。嗯。Uh, so um, this is what I take out.、Um, Uh, out of this process,、uh, which is a process of establishing and then dismantling, so it's a continual process of that. And people、um, not familiar with this process may find it confusing. So I, I will stop here for now. You know,、uh, Virilio uh, once posed this question, uh, uh, and he, he asked, "What is the best and worst of things?" And the one ancient answer is language. Uh, uh, one answer that we might give today, certainly an answer that Virilio himself might give, would be: What is the best and worst of things? Speed.、Uh, and of course, in in terms of our present seminar and and of what Achang was saying,、uh, one answer could also be theory or design. What is the best and worst of things? Theory or design, and so on. Now, the the conundrum said, I think, uh, uh, um, uh, Chen put it on the table. Of course, you have this long tradition. I mean, like in、uh, in Taoism, you have the sentence,、uh, "He who knows speaks not; he who speaks 
knows not. Right? So now what does that describe? I mean, that describes, of course, a cross. Right? I, I think the, the, uh, 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 the technical term would be a chiasmus. You know, it's like a, a point of, uh, of crossover. And, th and the, maybe the only way of getting out of uh, dilemmas like that is by changing the framework. Right? Like, like if, you, you, if you constantly work within a particular framework, these contradictions are bound to appear and, and reappear uh, all the time. And it's probably, and this was, I think, a point also, a question also asked, it's probably also not a question of finding a balance between saying something and not saying something. I mean, there's no possibility of a balance. I mean, a chiasmus is not a position of balance. I mean, it's, uh, the stakes are too high. Right, for us to, uh, to come up with a certain idea of balance. It's really maybe a question of pushing it uh, a little further. So maybe the only way to um, uh, deal with the question of theory, and I think this is also an implication of what uh, uh, Acheng is saying, is not to abandon it. I mean, you can't abandon theory completely, but to do it in a different way. I mean, to push, to push it uh, uh, to a point where it turns. Right, to, to, to lead it towards a certain kind of catastrophe, right, a, a turning point, and then, and then sort of uh, see where that gets us, rather than to like, try and find a kind of moderate uh, or moderating position, uh, where, which will never work. I mean, you, you, you're going to get yourself exactly back into the same kinds of uh, dilemmas. So that's a, a comment, and um, uh, if there are other comments from the floor, um, the floor is now open. Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, about the nature of uh, creativity, uh, and in particular the argument that, uh, uh, if I may put it in Eliot's terms, because T.S. Eliot wrote an essay nearly 100 years ago called Tradition and the Individual Talent, where he in effect makes the same argument that the greater the self-effacement of the artist, the, the greater the work. Uh, and it seems to me that uh, what you are saying has some similarity to that. Now, while I uh, share those sentiments to a considerable degree, uh, I also had another set of concerns. Uh, for example, I've lately been reading about the great exhibition uh, which was held at the Crystal Palace in London in 1851. Uh, and at the India uh, a pavilion or the India court as it used to be called in those times. Uh, the British, uh, who were then of course the colonial rulers of India, put forward a large number of exhibitions. Uh, so you had material objects from the world of agriculture, from the world of sculpture, from art, so forth and so on. Um, all kinds of tools, implements, raw materials, vegetables, everything, because the idea was to provide a compendium of the knowledge of India. Now, uh, the interesting thing is that when you look at the so-called art objects, uh, uh, we are told quite a bit about those objects, but not a single word is told about the producers of those objects, about the people who produce them. Uh, because in a sense, of course, it seems to me that the people were in fact actually quite irrelevant for the British. Right, so my question then is that it seems to me that the kind of argument that you're making, which I'm quite sympathetic to in some respects, can in other respects actually obscure the work of labor, right? So that, so that it seems to me that we would have to distinguish between different kinds of artistic endeavor, if I may put it this way, because part of the design of colonialism has always been to, in some sense, obscure the nature of labor behind the products, you see. Right, so I was wondering if you might use that as a counterfoil to the kind of argument that you're making and perhaps comment on it. Uh, so I said I used the self-effacement, the self-effacement, the self-effacement. When I said, oh, in the old days, there was a way to do a self-effacement. At the end, I was trying to make the self 就是这样一个否定的关系 As I said earlier, um, the process, uh, this uh, thinking process would be 
establishing and also and then de destruct denying at the same time. And at the time I was talking about this uh, collaboration, I was um, referring to the individual uh, state, uh, the process of creation. Zhang Lei, you translate. 我在猜他刚才说的，我英文太不好了，因为这些学术的词儿一下连着四个词儿，这一句话的时候实在是不能彻底的懂。呃呃，我不知道我能不能回答特别准确。刚才我听到了两个问题，呃，我想可能是因为阿成的说话方式吧，呃，是嗯、呃，他特别慢的说一个特别长的东西，你以为他说的是这儿，然后最后他的结果永远是这儿。要不要我接着说？你还是翻？啊，都行。啊，嗯 ，I was trying to get something. You're all talk. Um, you're all very. You're all academics. I'm trying to get it. I think there were um two issues here. One is um the way Achen communicates. It's a long and slow process. You think he's getting at some something, then he ends up somewhere else. 呃，所以当时我听阿成刚才说，呃，那个历史的创作性，啊、呃，集体创作不签名这事儿，我当时有点担心，特别怕听众得到马上联想到文革，我其实挺怕，当时我就担心这个，果真有个小女孩就开始提到，呃，她就联想到文革的创作，而且小孩可能。那种分辨力不是特别强，他马上就得想到，可能阿成是在肯定那种创作性。Um, just now we talked about the the, uh, the creative process where the artists don't leave their names on their artwork, and I was a bit concerned that um, many people, especially the young people, would jump to the conclusion that he was referring to the Cultural Revolution, and uh, he was really. Um, that he might be supporting this creative process as done in, during the Cultural Revolution. Um,那也许我是理解错了,就是说我是想就是解释一下阿成的,就是说因为也听到了刚才这位的一个问题哈,我就是以我的平时我一直在听他的这东西,就以我的理解,就参与一下这讨论,就是 um, 也就是再次强调一下我的理解，就是阿成，我觉得他的最后要强调的，他最后其实转了一个弯转到的是一个非常个人的创作性，而是说的是现代艺术家承担的有多么重，所以才会有这么长的一段历史来最后告诉你，我这个作为一个艺术家，你承担的东西其实比以前要多得多，所以才会有他后头的这些说法。我想可能是这样的。嗯嗯 uh, my personal take on this was that um, I think what A Cheng finally ended up saying was um, there's um, for uh, the individuals, uh, the creative process getting on uh, the, the responsibilities coming with this uh, creative process gets heavier and heavier and the modern artists really end up with a, a lot more we have to deal with. 对，我是我想，可能他就是更加还是集中在一个小的细节上，而不是特别要说到，嗯、呃，要引证一个大的什么东西。他喜，我想，我猜他就是喜欢结束在一个小的细节上，是一个非常个人的经验。So I think he was falling on a individual um experience and smaller detail rather than drawing some um grand or broad conclusions. 呃，就是你先建立一个东西，你后面的叙述是否定了前面建立的那个东西的一大部分的时候，那个东西又改变了，就是你原来叙述的那东西，那个图景又改变了。啊，对不起，再说一次。啊，换个说法。我先说，比如说我呃，我先说。呃，比如说集体的，集体，这个集体当中的个人不承担那么多的责任的时候，所以呢，他他反而他自己这个部分呢，他力量很强
And I was referring to the process of group, um, the collaborative process, when the in individual doesn't have to take on so much, uh, the part he actually takes on becomes stronger, becomes more powerful. However, for the modern artist, when he's taking on much more, many more objects, his um, many more um, aspects, he's really taking on the responsibilities and aspects that the group uh, could take take on um, together. And this process, once it's established, um, each part that originally that could be very strong has now changed. 當代現在我們作為一個藝術家,我們能夠能不能夠撐得起這個。And um, as contemporary artists, the question is are we really capable of carry so much on our shoulders that was originally the job of the group. Uh, uh, and so what we established earlier would no longer have the same significance um, as originally intended. Um, let me make a, a quick uh, let me make a quick clarification on the on the uh, I think two points being made right one the first, one point is on impersonality and Elliot theory now uh, don't forget that Elliot also said this right that uh, only those artists uh, who have personality know what it is to want to try to escape from it right so so this whole theory of impersonality is slightly paradoxical Right? I mean, it's only those with strong personalities who want to escape from it. So that's already a little ambiguous. Now, the second point is also very interesting. When you said that uh, during the Crystal Palace uh, exhibition, uh, you have a lot of, uh, uh, the, the fat, what you find is the fetishization, shall we say, of, uh, of Indian products, but uh, no word mentioned about uh, 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 the producers. Right? So in other words, about the process of production and, uh, and about uh, labor. So the, the, all the focus is on uh, what is produced and uh, no attention has been given to the process of production, which of course is the position that we all uh, 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 bemoan and, and, and agree with. But it's, I think it's probably slightly a slant from uh, what the uh, issue on the table is, which is this whole question of like uh, art without names. Right? Whether you can have a collab collab collaborative process of art without names and how, as it were, uh, when uh, a cult of personality develops, right? like when, when, when you, know, you, sign, you do a picture and you sign your name, then that in fact changes the whole, the whole process of, uh, of art production. I think th th those are some of the things. Uh, you wanted to make a comment. Go ahead. Uh, we know it, takes, it has taken as long as 1,000 years, namely from Han Dynasty to Song Dynasty, to finish the course of um, uh, localization of Buddhism, seeing it was brought from the Asian India. So my question is, how long will it take, in your opinion, for Chinese to totally understand or to totally accept or accurately understand the mod modernity or the theories from the West. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I just want to say. 
他从汉朝就来到中国会有这个过程and uh, forecasting this would not be my my specialty so i i find it hard hard to say 但是我知道这个是中国人的一个焦虑就是嗯这现在大概有uh, I think it's part of the uh, Chinese anxieties because many feel that um, it's been such a long time. Why don't we still not quite get it? And uh, I don't know how long it's going to take to overcome this kind of anxiety. Uh, <coughs> 末年的时候佛教传入啊它是跟印度大麻一块传入的所以呢它在传教的时候大麻起到非常大的作用但是我们现在显然不借助这样的工具来理解西方所以就更完全猜不到 uh, One thing I want to mention uh, that's slightly irrelevant that um, in Eastern Han Dynasty Buddhist Buddhism came from India together with the Indian marijuana. Now we cannot understand Western um, theory or um, anything with this kind of assistance. So it's becoming harder to predict. Forjoinlide at that time, the Chinese marijuana had a much lower level of this good substance. So with the Indian marijuana, you really could get to see what you wanted to, to see. And uh, the process was accompanied by, by this um, hallucinating um, feeling. Modernity. <laughs> Okay, um, well, maybe uh, one final comment, if there is one. Okay, right, please. Uh, can you make it short and sweet? <笑>喂那个我用中文问问题请翻译翻译一下然后阿晨先生最后提到了您减少异化的方式是接触更多的艺术方面以便找到您所谓那个感觉到感觉的那种过程嗯虽然您是不小心成为小说家的我现在好
at one point in your life you stumbled upon um, writing and uh, you, you became a writer. I'm just wondering now if you're still making the di distinction among different kinds of art or are you just fe feeling the feeling? Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>其实它可能就是一个一个一个一个 但那个艺术家不是这样呃，呃，不是说我发现，好像。Question, question is, do you, um, do you still have this strong sense of alienation um, in the process of writing? 其实是我现在没有没有这个问题，我已经我已经很容易处理这样，很容易处理。呃，他他就像我可能小的时候去学习吃螃蟹。但是现在很熟练的吃螃蟹的时候，他已经不是问题了。Look at how happy he looks. Maybe we we should break now and uh, uh, have lunch and then come back at two o'clock for the next session. Uh, thank you, Ajahn.